Hello everyone. Today I'm here to cover the most feared topic in machine learning, that is interpreting the AUC ROC curve. Hopefully by the end of the video, you will have a clear idea about what AUC ROC curve is. So let's get started. AUC ROC curve is basically the plot of sensitivity versus one minus specificity what are these terms so these are like complex terms for simple uh, terms so sensitivity is nothing else but your positive recall again for people who are still confused what recall is recall is basically out of all positives samples how many samples was my classifier able to pick up so sensitivity is also called as true positive rate and the formula for this is tp that is true positive upon tp plus fn where fn is false negative i hope this is clear now specificity is basically negative recall that simply means out of all the negative samples how many samples was my classifier able to pick up that's it that is what specificity is 1 minus specificity so the formula for this would be tn upon tn plus fp when you calculate 1 minus specificity the value turns out to be fp upon tn plus fp this is simple maths i take this term 1 minus tn upon tn plus fp the denominator goes up tn is subtracted and you are only left with fp so you reach this term so I hope the values are very clear to you about what sensitivity and specificity are. So let's move ahead now. In order to understand the concept, let's first take a very simple example of a classifier. So I've built a classifier which has four samples. Say for example the actual values of those samples were 1, 0, 1, 0. I had some training data and I fitted a basic logistic regression model and I got the output in terms of probability scores as 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. Now what AUC ROC curve does is it takes threshold values from 0 to 1 depending upon the number of samples you have in your data set that you have trained on and it basically gives you the values at different thresholds of true positive rates that we have covered previously and false positive rates okay so we'll start by finding out the value of the classifier at threshold 0 so at y equals to 0 all my values that is my probability values are greater than 0 so my classifier if I build with a threshold of 0 all the values would be classified as 1 1 1 and 1 since all the values at threshold 0 here the values are greater than 0 so this is what you get at threshold 0 similarly at threshold 0.2 my 0.8 probability score will be classified as 1, 0.6 would be 1, 0.4 would be 1 and I have kept a threshold of greater than or equal to so even 0.2 would be classified as 1. Okay, So far so good. Now let's go to 0.4. At y equal to 0.4 now the first sample would be classified as 1, second sample would be classified as 1, third will be classified as 1 
but the fourth one now would be classified as zero because point two is less than point four so you will be classifying that sample as zero similarly you will do something similar for point six so for point six you will have one one zero zero for y of point eight you will have the values as one zero 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 because just one value is greater than equal to your threshold value so you'll have one zero 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 and at one since none of the values are even equal to one in terms of the probability score you will have values such as zero 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 and zero okay all the values are calculated out to be zero now let's calculate the false true positive rate and false positive rate at threshold 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 okay so at 0 at threshold 0 my true positive rate is equal to true positive so if you consider this 1 and 1 is true positive 1 and 1 is true positive so I have two two positive samples again divided by two positives plus I have the denominator now have as false negatives I don't have a zero here I have zeros here but there are no false negatives so this value turns out to be 1 similarly the false positive rate is basically the ratio of false positives so you have this value is false, false positive this value is false positive so false positive is basically my actual value was 0 I classify that as 1 that is a false positive so I have two false positives divided by two negatives I don't have any two negative here there is no negative value here so two negative is 0 plus false positive is 2 so I have a value of FPR at threshold 0 to be 1 1 okay similarly I do the same for threshold equal to point 0.2 at threshold equal to point 0.2 my true positive rate by calculation comes out to be 1 and false positive rate comes out to be 1 which is basically the same calculation because y.2 is equal to y0 so the calculation remains the same I hope this is clear till now Next up, I'll calculate the threshold at point 0.4. Okay, so at point 0.4, now the true positive rate, if you keep calculating, the true positive rate would be 1 and false positive rate would be 0.5. The same calculation goes again. At point 0.6, we get a TPR of 0.5. And an FPR of 0.5 okay at point 0.8 we get a TPR of 0.5 FPR of 0 and similarly at 1 you will get a TPR of 0 and FPR of 0 again okay I hope all of this is making sense now what we have to do is since I have a set of points I just have to plot these points on a graph wherein my x-axis would be my false positive rate my y-axis would be true positive rate true positive rate and false positive rate cannot exceed 1 so that is my maximum limit and this is the value start from 0 okay so let's plot a bigger graph to make things clear now I plot two positive rate here I plot false positive rate here okay this value ranges from 0 to 1 this value ranges from 0 to 1 if you notice the area of this square 
is 1 1 into 1 is 1 so my AUC ROC or the area under the curve when you're fitting this uh, curve cannot exceed more than 1 okay so that is the underlying assumption now let's start plotting okay at threshold 0 I had a TPR and an FPR of 1 and 1 so this is one point at threshold 0.4 I had a TPR of 1 and an FPR of 0.5 so this value is somewhere here at threshold 0.6 I had a TPR and an FPR of 0 0.5 0 0.5 so this value would somewhere be here so this is at this is at threshold 0 this is at threshold point 0.4 this is at threshold point 0.6 then at threshold point 0.8 I have my TPR as 0.5 and FPR as 0 so this value is here and at TPR 1 or sorry at threshold 1 my TPR and FPR are 0 and 0 so this is at threshold 1 this is at threshold point 8 okay drawing a straight line which is like the bare minimum line on the AUC ROC curve the AUC values can never go below 0.5 it is always above a straight line that is considered here now if I have to draw a curve to interpret the values of area under the curve I join the points like this okay now all this area is the area under the curve okay this value if you see is a right angle triangle inside a square so this area is 0 0.5 this area sums up to half the square of this area which would again result into 0 0.25 so the total area under the curve for this classifier is 0 0.75 so whenever you are evaluating classifiers it's a good practice to check their AUC scores now you don't have a lot of control when you've built a classifier you cannot modify the area under the curve but what you can do is you can always modify what your classifier is good at if you want to introduce some false positives this would be a good threshold but if you're very particular that you want more true positives and no false positives to enter in your system this ideally is the best threshold at point 8 that you can choose what will happen because of this is you will have true positive rate to be 0 0.5 which ideally should you would be wanting it to be more but at this case you won't have any false positives coming in okay this is one way to interpret the threshold so you can keep a threshold of 0.8 but now if you want your true positive performance to be really good what you can do is in turn of having threshold at 0.8 you can have a threshold at 0.4 wherein you are allowing half the false positives that would normally occur but you are guaranteeing that almost all of your true positives are captured so this can also be a good classifier again deciding which threshold to choose is a business decision that you will take based on the data that you have so yeah that's it from my end i hope this video was informative please do subscribe to the channel thank you so much